Welcome once again. Right now we're at 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 through 13. Taking God's grace for granted. Paul continues his letter to the Corinthians, saying, Working together, we entreat also that you do not receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, At an acceptable time I listened to you. In the day of salvation I helped you. Once again, Paul quotes the so-called Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 49, verse 8, to substantiate his doctrine. Behold, Paul says, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. In the scriptures, the word day can mean a 24-hour period, but it can also mean as much as a thousand years or more. It could mean an age. It could mean a lot more. Now is the acceptable time. Paul says, now is the day of salvation. We give no occasion of stumbling in anything. In other words, Paul says he doesn't give any room for sin. No occasion for stumbling. The word stumbling here is used often in regards to sin. If somebody sins, then they stumble. That our service may not be blamed. So Paul doesn't give any room for sin so that nobody blames him. But in everything, commending ourselves as servants of God, in great endurance, in afflictions. So what Paul's about to get into here is a whole long list of hardships, of things that he had to go through for the sake of the faith, for the sake of his doctrine. So what he's saying here in context is, we're not taking the grace of God in vain. We don't, we don't take the grace of God for granted. We paid a dear price for it. We appreciate the grace of God so much so we went through these things and he listed them. Great endurance, in afflictions, in hardships, in distresses, in beatings, in imprisonments, in riots, in labors, in watchings, in fastings, in pureness, in knowledge, in perseverance, in kindness, in the Holy Spirit, in sincere love, in the word of truth. A lot of people don't know even what truth is today, and if they do hear it, they reject it. In the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right and on the left. Powerful statement here. You want to be protected from the attacks of the enemy. You know, I hear a lot of Christians say, well, the devil attacked me. Well, the devil's attacking or the devil's doing this. Hey, if you have the armor of righteousness, if you know you are obeying God in everything that applies to you, in all of his commandments, as it says in Luke chapter 1, verse 6, Zechariah and Elizabeth, the parents of John the Baptist. This is before the death, the resurrection, the ascension of Jesus. I mean, this is before that. It says they obeyed all of God's commandments blamelessly. Think about that. You know, that really flies in the face of a lot of Christians today that says, oh no, we cannot obey the, the law of God at all because the law of God is a perfect law and we're not perfect. We can't obey it. Well, it sounds good, but they don't think about the fact that God is not a tyrant commanding his beloved people to do things that he knows they can't do and then judge them for it if they can't do it. No, God doesn't do that. He said in Deuteronomy chapter 30, after he brought down the Torah through Moses, he said, these things are easy. These things are easy for you. You don't have to go up into heaven to get it. You don't have to dig down to the core of the earth to get it. It's right there, right in your heart and in your mouth. The word that I've given you, the commandments, they are easy for you to obey. That's what Jesus meant and that's what the disciples meant time and time again when they said the kingdom of heaven is at hand, which means it's right there for you to take. The righteousness of God, that is obeying all of God's commandments, is right there for you to take. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to climb up to the top of Mount Everest. You don't have to go down into the Mariana Trench. You don't have to do these things. It's right there. God said it's right there, easy for you to obey. I know some people said, oh, there's 613 commandments. You know, we can't obey all of them. If you break one, you break them all. Of those 613 commandments, only a fraction of those actually apply to you. 
Most of them are for the priests. A lot of them are for women. A lot of them are for children. A lot of them are for the stranger. Some of them are only for men. It makes no sense to believe that God wants you to obey a command that only the priests are supposed to obey. God made commands for different people, but we are supposed to obey every command that we can. And in obeying God, we put on the armor of righteousness, which protects us from all of the attacks of the enemy. By the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by glory and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true. In other words, some people thought that the true believers in Jesus were deceivers. And even today, if you really preach what the scriptures say, if you really preach the word of God, you're going to be called these things, a deceiver, you know, a, a heretic, whatever. But if you're preaching what the scripture says in context, the entire scope of scripture, you are preaching the truth. So you are as a deceiver, but yet you are true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold, we live, as punished and not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. Our mouth is open to you, Corinthians. Our heart is enlarged. In other words, we have great love for you. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affections. Now, in return, I speak as to my children. You also open your hearts. Great lesson from Paul here. Don't take the grace of God for granted. Until next time, seek him with all your heart. And if you seek him with all your heart, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.